Ah, I'm just doing a little update while I can. Corey, I beat Robin Williams. He was two months younger than me, and it seems he just couldn't take it anymore. Oh well, I've been feeling that way for a while now. Uh, I got this dog, you see. I'm calling myself. Uh, I carry on because I don't want this dog being upset. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? But then I do get pleasure out of the fact that the dog is enjoying it, except the dog is now freaked out. Anyway, but old Robin Williams, he made me laugh. Just proves comedian is a, a, a noble profession because uh, we're all crying inside, really. It's just that some of us manage to cheer the others up a bit. <laughs> it's an illusion of happiness. Yeah, well, uh, the state has completely disowned responsibility for me, apart from my pension. So, uh, Yeah, I, I look back on Glastonbury round about the millennium as a very exciting phenomenon that actually had international influence at that time and it had in fact been deliberately taken apart by her Majesty's government acting through undercover in the town. Yeah, well that's what happened. That's what happened to our revolution. I personally, as the leading marijuana smoker, I have had my life completely destroyed by false accusations and by having criminals see my vulnerability, offer to help me, and then shut me even more. Yeah, well, it's sad to realise that what you were really going for in life has failed. But, on the other hand, you can look back on the adventure, you know what I mean? It was a lot of fun going for it. It was a lot of fun climbing up on the main stage at the Glastonbury Festival. It was a lot of fun strutting around all the other festivals, playing my guitar as loud as I could, singing at the top of my voice and encouraging everybody else to play and sing the best they could. Yeah, I thought that was well wicked, real good fun. And I can understand why it had to be stopped. We can't have that catching on, can we? You don't want all these dreadlocks believing that they are, in fact, far eye. We, I and I, we are that far eye. We are a far distance away from Bob Marley back in 1979, isn't it? That's uh, 36 years, isn't it? 46 years. That's a long time ago, whatever it is. Far eye, yeah. So what I'm looking at it is the way I understand it. Uh, people who illuminate themselves and uh, emancipate themselves and uh, get rid of all the faulty programming that they've been fed before they knew what they were doing. People who educate themselves or let ya educate them to themselves are the ones that actually put things right. We're the ones that say, no more of this, no more of that. And we actually do it. We don't say, oh, next week we'll have a meeting to protest that we shouldn't 
get into trouble for smoking ganja. We don't say that. No, I've said this since 1986. The way you liberate ganja is you start smoking it and you keep smoking it and you don't hide it. And if anybody wants you to hide it, you tell them, hey, fuck off, you don't want to associate with them. And if the police tell you to stop it, you say, we don't want to stop it. I don't agree with the law. We just got the bottle. I mean, look what happens to the man who did that. <laughs> Sleeping in the park in a leaky tent, a very tiny leaky tent, in a sleeping bag. Well, it was a beautiful sleeping bag. It was a combat sleeping bag full of down feathers. Unfortunately, in a panic the other night, I broke the zip. That means it's defunct as a sleeping bag. It's just a quilt. It's got one end stuck to the other front, right? So we haven't got a sleeping bag anymore. We've got a blanket covered with a dog's blood. We moved off oh, the mattress. Bought a blow up air bed. Yeah, it made a difference, but it comes down every night. It comes down very quick. And it's covered with blood like everything else. A sleeping bag, blanket, my clothes. And lying in the tent, listening to the rain, you can't even go out for um, Jimmy Riddle without getting wet. Dogs had no exercise for days. Basically, just been sitting there out of the rain. Looking back at life, thinking what was the good, good times I had, thinking about the people that have put me down, thinking about how ironic it is that in this day and age a man can be sentenced to death out in the cold alone with no one helping him. I mean, I don't even have a nurse taking my temperature anymore. I don't have anybody caring for me. Haven't even got a repeat prescription of painkillers. I mean, how can you arrange to see a doctor when you don't feel like moving until 12 o'clock? And you can only move if it's not raining. And when you do move, you're busting for the toilet at both ends. And then what? Hobble around with your heavy luggage and try and get food. I can't eat any more fast food. It's two pound for my breakfast coffee. I can't eat many, any more fast food. I haven't had proper nourishment for months. And then what? Make an appointment to come shuffling along to this doctor's surgery at a time it suits them. Leave my dog tied up out in the rain, howling. Would I do all this heavy luggage? Carry it all over the place. I'm 63. I'm not 21 anymore. That's a couple of hundred. Well, I'm, I'm not up for this. So I guess I'll not be getting to see a doctor about it. I mean, when the last time I did see a doctor in there, in that place, over two weeks ago, it was because I had been shoved in a hostel without my dog. My dog had to go elsewhere. This is what the council required. As a result, and I nearly lost the dog, but I found I was just sinking in that hostel. I smoked some weed. It makes me sink a little bit slower. See? I got kicked out on my own without even the dog. Oh, right, before that happened, they come running up to see this doctor here because he phoned me up and said, come and see me. You know, I'm pathetically ill, in bed, can't move. But I'll get up and hobble along here. And he thinks it's a mental health issue. That is, somebody phones me to have a little chat who says, would you like to come in and see us a mile away? in St. Werborough, a person that's sleeping out ill and I have to go down after waiting a few days, which I miraculously survived, to sit and talk to somebody that's getting well paid about what can we do about this? And on the phone these people are giving me no clue of what they could possibly do about it because I, I, I don't hear anything positive, they just like to 
talk about mental health history. Don't want to play. So, the news about Robin Williams has prompted me to think, yeah, I am doing what I decided I'm doing a few weeks ago. I'm laying down my load bit by bit, that is, I am dying. I'm doing it slowly, putting as much accentuation as I can on the positive aspects of my life, accepting like Robin Williams that it's all really deep shit suffering if you look at it too honestly. Nevertheless, I still think Angela's is really good and I really think that a lot of people could get a lot of benefit out of marijuana if it wasn't so heavily suppressed. I also think a lot of people would get a lot more benefit out of it if it wasn't so cut and short dealed and underweight and all that. And you weren't so fucked up about using it. You know why I used to believe the best way to use marijuana is let's have a party, lively up yourself. You know, all of us, let's go for it together and feel all right. But then again, that's old fashioned, that's as old fashioned as Mark and Mindy, isn't it? Happy. I'm using the time to reflect as you do when you're dying. I mean, it still really upsets me what happened with my ex wife. You know, I last saw her in 2001. At that time, I thought I had to get rid of her. But neither of us did well after that. Well, she says she did. I can't believe that. I can't believe it. I, I played in the game of life. I tried to do it right every time. I tried to be really honourable with that woman. Why don't I get the fair prize? It's all this camera stuff completely bullshit. You know what I mean? All right, well, maybe I'll be willing to admit that. Looking at this very old man. Yeah, most of what you believe in in life is bullshit, but it's good when you go for it. Yeah, go for it while you can. And then when you're finished, probably just get out of it. So it looks like somebody who's going to be lucky enough to get a beautiful dog for nothing. Because I have no idea where I'm going to part company from a dog by going to the other dimension. Yeah? Well, let me tell you, it's a beautiful dog. It probably won't be beautiful after I'm gone, but probably neurotic and crazy. Uh, and of course, nobody else would have a clue how to get the best out of it because they ain't been a human being like me, exactly like me, ever. So I'm arriving at a point where I find I have no longer anything to say. I'm saying this more as a diary, more as a diary of a dying man, to be examined by someone later. Um, not really anymore as a frantic attempt to get help. I do not expect to get help. I should be getting smart on this now. You know what I mean? Two thousand and. Nine got conned by a woman up in Glasgow, introduced to me by a, a friend who was parasiting on me, and uh, she stole a lot off me and then uh, set it up so the police could lock me up falsely and steal everything else off me. Well, I couldn't get any help. It was very heartbreaking to be in prison 
and to realize no one out there cares anymore. I'm entirely on my own. All I am is a bank account with a good balance in it. That is what is kept alive to this point where it's a bank account that's empty. Oh well, done it. I never really got any help. I wasted a lot of time looking for it. I spent the time more smart when I was just going around having fun with this dog and allowing other people to observe the fun. Yes, I was also rather exhibitionistically playing music and uh, passing on some of the pleasures that I experienced on marijuana. Yes, I have tried to set an example of more overtly using marijuana and not keeping it secret. Yes, I want to provoke the legal debate. But, hey, the legal debate's been going on since way back in the 1960s when my dad was in the drug squad and I was just into secondary school. It's not going to get sorted. It's just a case of emancipate yourself and join others that have emancipated themselves. In, in fact, Oh, last time I saw my brother, I think he was wearing a very colourful t-shirt he got in Switzerland. He said, life's a bitch, then you die. Up when he was right, still nice if you can have a bit of good change on the way. Is this the last you're ever here of Will Smile? And he's speaking too quiet. Nanu. Nanu.